Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here and welcome back to another video. Before we get started, I just want to quickly say I'm sorry about my voice. I do sound a little bit funny, but I'm battling a cold, so I'm trying my best here to get the voiceover done on the video. And I really wanted to share how to use this new Kite Shaker Window and Frame Dynamics with the coordinating shaker pouches. So when I first saw this die, I really wanted to create a really brightly colored kite and have it be the focal of the card and kind of create a scene in the background that we could kind of make it look like the kite was floating in the sky. So what I want to do first is I'm going to create a background and I'm going to use the mini cloud edges stencil and I'm going to just add some ink to this white cardstock panel. Now I've already cut the panel down to four inches by five and a quarter inches, which is going to make it just slightly smaller than an A2 size card. So we're going to be able to see a little bit of that card base peeking around the panel when we put everything together. So I'm just going in with a Distress Ink Blending Tool and Peacock Feathers Distress Ink, and I'm just adding this ink directly onto my panel using the stencil as my guide. And if you don't have this stencil, but you do want to create a sky background, you can just use the Distress Ink and add the color directly to the panel without the stencil as well. Both options would work really nice for this design. You can see on screen that I have a piece of grass that I've die cut from Limelight cardstock using the Stitch Snowdrifts Dynamics. And I also have a few of the image stamps that I've pulled from the Up in the Air stamp set from Birdie Brown. This stamp set features a hot air balloon and then a bunch of coordinating stamps to kind of create a scene that looks smaller on the ground. So I knew it would be perfect for what I was envisioning for this card. So I'm just kind of laying out the pieces and figuring out where I want the kite to be. So the kite piece I have on screen here is the frame. So that's going to be the finished size. But what we need to do is cut out the window portion. So that's what I have here on the panel and I've held it in place with some repositionable tape. And I'm just running this through my die cutting machine. And what that's going to do is it's going to die cut the window shape of the kite. This is going to fit the shaker pouch. You can see here, I'm just kind of putting it right into that opening and everything fits perfectly together since it's all coordinated to work together. So now that I have the window die cut, we know exactly where the kite's going to be. I want to stamp my images and add some color to them. So I'm just going to stamp them onto a piece of white cardstock. This is Nina 80 pound cardstock and I'm stamping my images with extreme black ink because I am going to be coloring them in with Copic markers. Now I wasn't sure when I started how many clouds and how many trees I wanted to include. So I ended up flipping the panel and stamping these a second time. That way I had a bunch of images that I could quickly color and then just kind of pull from those colored images to complete my card. So I quickly colored them and die cut them off camera. I just used some basic green colors for the trees. I added a little bit of brown and gray to the house and then I added a tiny bit of gray markers to the clouds just to give them a little bit of dimension. And then I die cut them and I have them ready here for our card. For the grass, I decided to add a little bit of Twisted Citron Distress Ink to the top of the grass. This just added a little bit of shading and just kind of made it look a little bit more dimensional and not so flat on the card. I glued that onto the bottom of our scene and then I added the little house piece as well as the little tree. And then I'm going to start working on the kite. So for the kite, I knew I wanted it to be a really bright color, especially because we're going to be adding some sequins into the inside area. So it will cover up some of that brighter color that we use. But for the frame of the kite, I wanted that to be a little bit more subtle and blend into the background a bit. So what I did is I die cut the frame from some silver sparkle cardstock. And you can see once again that the shaker pouch fits into those openings and then the frame fits perfectly over top of that. But we do need to create the backer piece that's going to close the sequins inside of our shaker pouch. And this is what we're going to see on the front of the card. Now I could have just used pink cardstock, so you can absolutely do that if you prefer, but I decided to use some picked raspberry distress ink and add it to a white cardstock panel. And then I added a little bit of water just to give it a bit of a distress look as well. I just added water a couple of times until I had the look I was going for. And then once it's completely dry, what you need to do is you need to take the frame of the kite, which is going to be the outside parameter. And I just set it on top of our little piece here that we've added the ink to, and I used it as a guide to cut out a shape. And what this is going to be is the backer piece. And since we've used the frame to cut it out with our scissors, we know it's slightly larger than the window part that we've die cut from the cardstock panel. So I'm going to easily be able to add this to the back of the card and we can use this to close all of the sequins in there once we add them in. Okay, so now we're gonna add our shaker pouch directly into the panel. And this is super easy with these shaker pouches because they already have a lip detail on the outside edge, which is just a little bit of a ledge that's going to work to hold onto that adhesive that we added to the panel. So I just used eighth inch score tape and I added it all the way around the kite. And then I very carefully positioned the shaker pouch inside of the opening and pressed down really firmly. And that is going to hold it in place within our panel. 
Now I know we need to add our little pink piece onto the back. So what I'm going to do is take that same score tape and I'm going to go around once again all the way around the outside edges. And this is going to create a barrier that is going to secure the pink piece to our panel and make sure that all of the sequins that I'm adding in here now are going to stay firmly in place and not come out of any of those little shaker pouches. You can use any sequins here that you have on hand or you can use seed beads or glitter, anything that you kind of want to add inside and have it move around. I had this little collection of pinks and greens and blues with some iridescent and I thought it went really nicely with the overall design. So I added those into each of the openings just enough to make them shake around. And then I removed the backing from the adhesive strips and I'm just adding the pink kite that we cut out with our scissors directly to the back. Since it was cut slightly larger, it's going to fit perfectly onto that back area and now we have all of our sequins all enclosed inside of that kite shaker and we're going to be able to finish it off with that silver sparkle frame on the front when we're ready to add that on. So for this part here, I like to use liquid glue just because it's very thin. It's really hard to get a regular adhesive onto these little pieces here. So you can quickly go around it with a glue pen or any type of liquid glue. Just add that on there and then just press down firmly until that holds into place. Once that's done, our kite is finished, and now we just need to add all of the finishing details to our scene. So the first thing I'm going to do is add all of the clouds to the scene, and I'm going to start off with the cloud that I kind of want to look like it's peeking out from behind the kite. So what I did for this one is I just took my scissors and I very carefully cut a straight edge onto one of the sides of the cloud, and then I can adhere it directly to the panel, and it kind of looks like it's in behind the kite, even though we've just kind of trimmed it down to make it look that way. Now before I started to add the rest of the clouds, I did want to do our sentiment strip so I could get the placement of that so I could kind of figure out exactly where I wanted the clouds to be positioned. So the sentiment says, you lift me up, thank you for that. And this is also from the same Up in the Air stamp set. And I've die cut it with a little sentiment strip from the Hearts in a Row Horizontal Dynamics. And I've stamped it onto a piece of black cardstock with Versamark ink and heat embossed it with white embossing powder. Now I'm going to be layering this over top of the kite which has dimension since it has the shaker pouch in it. So I added some foam adhesive on both ends of the little banner and now I'm just figuring out where I want to position the rest of the clouds. Once I had that figured out I just went ahead and adhered everything directly to the panel. I trimmed off the little extra piece of the cloud that was hanging over the side and then I have the panel completely finished and we can add our string to our kite. Okay, so to add our twine to the kite, what I like to use is matte multi-medium. And what I love about this glue is that it dries completely clear and I'm able to add it directly to the entire piece of string. So I just put it right onto my finger and then I just take the string and I kind of run it through that glue. So I just kind of pull it through until the entire piece of string is covered. And then I position it in place onto the card. And I usually just take an acrylic block and lay it over top until it's had time to set and dry against that paper. I also wanted to add a little bow to the kite string so while the base of the string was drying I created a little bow with the same twine and then I used the same matte multi-medium at the very top of the string there and I added this on as well. I used that same acrylic block and just kind of held it over top until everything was dry and then I used my scissors to trim off the little extra piece of string that was hanging off the side. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take our card panel and I'm going to add it to our card base, which is a Razzleberry card base that measures five and a half by four and a quarter inches. Since the string was still kind of drying, I decided to add the adhesive directly to the card base first, and then I just laid the panel on top and adhered it down. And then before calling the card finished, I did decide to add some clear sequins kind of scattered around the clouds and the sky. So I added those on with some of that same matte multimedium. And then I filled the centers of each of those sequins with silver stickles just to give it a little bit of shine and help them coordinate with the frame that we created with the silver sparkle cardstock. And that is going to finish our card. So now we have this really cool kite shaker. We have these really fun sequins kind of stuck inside of that kite design. And then we have the little scene that we created on the ground to make it look like the kite was kind of in the forefront and the scene was kind of out in the background. I hope you got some ideas on ways that you can use the new kite shaker window and frame dynamics. As always, I appreciate you being here even when I have a cold and I hope to see you in another video soon. Thanks so much for watching.